You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time to rock out with episode due of your bi-weekly options extravaganza. Known as the option block, what some outlets choose as their favorite options podcast on the planet. Hey, we don't judge. We produce a bunch of them. As long as you like and listen to them all, we're happy. <laughs> My name, of course, is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever exciting, at least we tend to think of it that way, the Options Insider Radio Network. Of course, a lot of you listening on demand. We love you all. However you get the shows, if you're listening on demand, you like what you hear, we just ask you rate and review. Wherever you get this show, so it could be in the individual option block feed if you listen that way. If that's the way you listen, though, you should make sure you listen to the whole network. You're missing out on a whole bunch of content. You can do it on the full network feed wherever you get these shows. Of course, you can always do it even where we, you get our app. A lot of you like to listen via our app. So if you get it in the iOS or Google app stores, you can leave your reviews there as well. All of that translates into new folks discovering the content all the time. And of course, if you want to turn it up to 11, you want to get exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. All you on-demand folks, out of luck, unless you go to theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. That'll get you access to the pro podcast feed. Then you can live on demand all you like with shows like pro Q&As, as well as, of course, options oddities. And hey, if you want to join us live for this show, for everything else we do throughout the week, you can do that over there, theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. Almost time. We're coming up to the end of the month. So it's almost time to choose our winner, winner, chicken dinner for the Pro Trading Crate giveaway for March. So if you guys have not joined the Secret Club yet, get in there. The clock is ticking to win the fabulous prizes. So keep an eye out. Hold up that golden ticket. You never know if you're going to be the winner. And we've sent out some cool stuff. I'm looking at a mountain of cool stuff in the corner of the studio right now. It's going to go out to someone. Maybe it'll be you. Theoptionsdecider.com. Slash Secret Club. And let's keep on rolling. Let's see who's joining us today. Unfortunately, they won't win any fabulous prizes except for the joy they receive from basking in my presence. Let's go out first to the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management. A, welcome back to the program. And B, how joyous has it been for you this week, sir, to bask in my presence? Not once, not twice, but thrice, sir. Oh, it's such a joy. It's a joy beyond words, Mark. I can hear the joy percolating in your voice, sir. The effervescence that is Uncle Mike. And then we go out to the land where effervescence goes to die. Yes, the shores of Maine, where everything's dark, everything's stormy. It's always overcast. And you know what? He's a lucky fellow because he usually gets to bask in my presence at least twice in the week. Sometimes if he's lucky, if he pops up on ball views, maybe thrice as well. So maybe he'll have a three-time winner himself as well. He is the rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from Option Pit. Dot com. Mr. G, welcome back to the program. I asked you that same question. How much of a joy is it for you to once again bask in my presence, sir? 
It is the uh, it is the uh, the joy the joy of living a, a, a clean life a good life that's what it is <laughs> that's it's your a reward very, very celebratory thing that's the reward very for living a clean life you get to bask in my presence as we all bask in the trading block it's time to break down the latest topics trades and trends in the world of options it's time for the trading block. All right, everybody, welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading, what is lighting it up out there on our screens, and of course, the old trading block portion of the show where we have to, can't really prepare for it too much, (laughs) too much ahead of time, listeners here, we're just tweaking our numbers as we kick off the segment. Let's dive into what's lighting it up out there on the screens as we are seeing a wee bit of red percolating through the old screens today the dow and the nasdaq both off half a percent or a little more nasdaq threatening about six tenths of a percent of the s&p not quite at that half a percent level pretty close about 0.45 or so out there so all of them kind of hanging out down there to the dark side Uh, you know maybe some concerns weighing on things out there crude of course interesting story are we going to tap into our strategic reserves what impact can that even have opec Meeting today, that's a big deal for the crude space, so we'll be talking about that a little bit later on today with the one and only Dan Gramza. He's always fun to talk about that kind of stuff with, so that'll be fun. Join us for TWIFO in a little bit over an hour. If you're listening live, you can just hang out in there. We'll be that back with the show live. If you're listening after the fact, just hit next. You'll get it on your podcast device of choice. And, of course, that means most of our ball friends, they were selling off. They still are, but they're starting to firm up. A little bit now. Let's get on out to the land of VIX, where as we kicked off the show, uh, VIX was down about almost exactly two points. Then as we kicked off the show, it had gotten about half a point back. So it was about 20 and a quarter when we kicked off the show. That puts it down about one and a half points. Like I said, it was down about two points right before showtime. VIX also getting a little bit frothier. It was at about a 108. Now as we kick off the show, at about a 110. So that's down six points from where it was this time last show. VXX at about 25 and a half. That puts it down about one and a half points from Monday's show. UBXY. Was getting into perilous territory. Was that about 12 and a half when we were coming into the start of the show a little bit before it? it has ticked up now to almost 1290. So getting some of that back. So it was down about one and three quarters. Now it's down right around one and a half, 1.4 points. Of course, if you know UBXY, you've been trading it for a while. You know, once you start getting to that or anywhere near that 10 strike, that's where things start to get a little bit wonky. That's also where they usually start to consider reverse splitting it. I know we've had the once in future and present Dr. Vix on. Follow views in this show in the past, and he's expressed many times when UBXY gets down to around that 10 level, that's when he starts backing off because it gets weird. And we are starting to see some of that weirdness, perhaps, again, flirting back up now right around 1290. So we get a little bit back. We'll see. If we get another pop in UBXY, then all this talk could be moved. They start shelling reactors again over there in Ukraine or something along those lines. And again, all this talk of vol eroding <laughs> will be will be a non-story, but we'll get the split we need a reverse split we need with, but just from the market, we don't need to do anything out there. And vol Q was at about 23 and a quarter vol Q, of course, the NASDAQ vol that puts it down about one and a quarter points. Of course, as we've been talking here, it has ticked up about half a point. It's up to about 2375 now, which puts it down about three quarters of a point from where it was this time last week. So a lot of table setting vol starting to firm up a little bit. We'll see if we can get back to unched even by, the end of the show as we go around the horn there's red on the screen that means we have to start with the rockingest of lobsters and his best friend his alter ego vol man perhaps his only friend he is out there in the hinterlands after all listeners mr rock lobster what are you and vol man keeping an eye on today sir uh well i actually before i talk about vol i i have to talk about portillo's hot dogs portillo's ah how did that portillo's i know it's portillo's but i gotta i you know i'm from california so i'm gonna say portillo's you know, because, you know, no one sells it. But, Portillo's, but, Portillo's, but even Portillo's. in California, they don't so, call it Portillo's. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, so Portillo's. Uh, so I got a gift pack from uh, one of my students. Wow. It was a, it That's was a nice student. Pack of hot dogs. That's a nice student. So yeah, did he forget my address? The, Is that what he did? I, I apparently I got the buns, the dogs, the mustard, the little spicy stuff you on it and the relish and the peppers like the Portillo's hot dog, just like I remember it from way back when. And um, so I'm asking everybody, like, I figured these are all for me, right? 
because nobody in the house, like nobody, there gets people who are like, nobody wants hot dogs. So I make a hot dog and then somebody tastes it. And they're like, this is an awesome hot. And they ate all my hot dogs. <laughs> Man, hot, gone. My whole, you, you didn't my get whole any of this full experience. I figure I'm going to get one a day for a week. I'm just going to go full portillos for every day for the week. I'm, I'm in. No. So that was your first mistake, all. revealing the Portillo's hot dogs to the rest of the family. That's something you keep in like the corner of the freezer or something to yourself. That's just for your yeah. own devices, sir. So just I'm just fair warning to listeners. If you get if you order the Portillo's with all the I'm always going to call Portillo's with all the fixings. Don't tell anybody. Has this prompted has this, has this prompted you to become a Portillo stockholder? They are public now. I, I am. I'm looking at it. I swear I got it queued up on my screen because the stock was like a high of 55 <laughs> I, I remember. Bucks. I remember when Sebastian was all in my face because he bought it at 29. He's like, I got it at 29, man, and then a boo-boo to you. And it was trading close to like, it was in the 40s, I believe, at the time. Of course, now you can get all you want for 24, 43, sir. Yeah, I know. I know. However, I think this is a, it, it, it's, you know what it is? It's like the, every every chain has to have a hook, you know? And just the Chicago, like kind of downtown food in Chicago is such a, it's a, it's, it's, you know, let's say, you know, it's not something you probably should eat every day, but you know, when, when the urge is there, you got to have it. So anyway, of course, you've listened to uncle Mike, yeah. he thinks it's a place you go to get burgers. He's the only person in the world <laughs> I know who gets burgers at Portillo's. <laughs> Portillo's. I didn't even know they had burgers. I, I like myself the Chicago dog, you know, there's really, it's hard to beat it. I, to beat I will it. say next time um, you come, you come to Chicago. Spend some time at Portillo's. Get yourself the rib dinner. It's pretty darn good. Really? You got to or you okay. got to wait forty minutes for it, but it's worth it. <laughs> I think I'm, it would. It's hard for me to go there and not get the hot dog. I have to admit, although this 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 little happy box they send you is is quite nice. I'm just saying. Um, oh, Vol, that's where we were. Um, oh, is the show about something besides have... Portillo's hot dogs? I forgot. Yes, exactly. So, but it is. It is. A, I haven't bought it yet, but I will. I'm gonna buy a little bit of stuff. So, oh, by the anyway, by the way, before I we get off of that, it. our chat is telling me they have a fish sandwich now in Portillo's. What fish sandwich? Really? Oh, <laughs> that sounds a awful and b. Hey, good. For, I guess it may be a Lent thing. I don't know, but uh, wow. I, I guess it's a good for Lent thing. So, so as uh, shocked as I was by the hamburgers, I am now double shocked by the fish sandwich. <laughs> I'm just. I can't speak for any of that. I'm just hot dog, pure hot dog. All right. So, Val, um, what I would say is we have had, what, 10 days of up. Look at every Q stock, big Q stock, blah, 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 all that. Up, 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 up. Um, end of the quarter today, um, all of the darlings, I would like, you know, like Google's down a little bit, Apple's down a little bit, Amazon's down a little bit. A uh, little bit of a bid for Val. I would not say it's a big bid for Vol. Uh, it's just kind of one of those days where it's like, okay, the momentum is done, right? So you have the momentum off the bottom. Now where do we go? So I think this part of this is, well, you know, kind of waiting for what's going on. I think a typical pullback day, nothing, nothing just because we've had all that, you know, I think there was, we got, I think we kind of got loaded into the fact that there was going to be a ceasefire and some of the stuff like this, and it didn't really happen. So there's more talks, there's more brokering, there's arguing about paying for natural gas and rubles and euros and, you know, more bickering and stalemate and stuff like that. So I think the market just took a little breather. Uh, so, you know, you get a little bit of a move in VIX um, and off of, you know, what was the pretty much the low tick, I think, yesterday. We traded in the 18 handle. Um, so I have a good shot at uh, the crystal ball this week. I'm, I'm within range. So, uh, but, you know, unless something kind of like weird ball drops, uh, you know, you got a split coming now. Tesla split. We had that run on that, right? You had a run, extra run, because, you know, Google's supposedly going to split. Amazon's going to split. Um, you know, the market, for whatever reason, they love stock splits. <laughs> um, so... I think that could be some latent uh, bullishness uh, or, you know, just for whatever reason, we're going to buy them uh, down the road. It's just not happening today for sure. So, but from of all, you still got like that kind of healthy contango. And from what I can see, 
So Vol Man, yeah. And it's like, so the nine day Vol really hasn't moved from yesterday. So even though VIX might be getting a little rosier, uh, like the short term Vol really isn't going up. So it's the market does not care a whole lot, uh, although we've been in a Vol contraction mode for about a week and a half, two weeks almost. And it's kind of stuck. It's here. Okay. It's like, it's sort of like, you know, now where do we go? Uh, you know, um, and I think that's what we have. So without, you know, earnings are going to be coming out soon. There's not a whole lot of catalyst going on in the next two weeks. Uh, you know, the Fed's got rates raising for as far as the eye can see. Um, uh, the yen's getting smashed a little bit. So it, nothing, nothing, uh, Nothing to move the needle. I haven't closed. I've, I've tried to, I've opened several trades today, but I have not closed any trades today at all. So that gives you a, gives you an idea how just, there's just not a lot moving. So it's not, not a bad day, just nothing, nothing moving enough to close anything. So unless you're looking to leg into some one by twos and hood, then that thing's moving. Uh, but we'll get Dude, to that. They, they couldn't, they wouldn't give them to me. Really? Like I couldn't get them for a credit. I tried for two days. Oh, I'm like, see that, it. that was, see, that was my thing. I, I did actually pay a couple of cents for one of them. I did. I did. Cause I was, uh, I was in the middle of a show. I was like, I can't, I don't, I don't have time to babysit this. So I just paid a couple of cents just to so get it done. I, you couldn't get, you couldn't get it for credit. It was no, like, they were very, I tried a few times myself cause I don't like paying for those either. And if you don't know what the hell we're talking about listeners, just, just tune into oddities tomorrow. The options com slash secret club. I heard one by twos. Are they back? We're we back to the dance of hood, which by the way, how ridiculous was it that the stock pops 25% on the announcement of they're going to extend trading hours unilaterally. Well, that's, that's great. Broker can do whatever the hell they want. The exchanges have to kind of play ball with you to make that make sense. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> they still have their regular hours. So Robin has opened a couple more hours. Great. Doesn't really mean a heck of a lot. That, that, that did kind of surprise me a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, giving back two bucks to that. So I'm, I'm still, I'm, you know, I, I guess I should just, just forget it and just buy a stock at 11 bucks or something. But um, what fun is that? I know, I know, I know. So I, I'm trying, I'm trying, and I'm like, I'm not going to be more aggressive. You know, I'm doing the over me. I'm waiting until the thought leaves because I know I'm going to have a good, good opportunity. I think I paid a whopping like I think two cents or something. So I had, yeah, I had to yeah. do it. I know it, it stuck in my craw a little bit too because I, I definitely prefer a credit. But you know, I got shows to do and uh, trades to talk about. So you know, I got to have some trades on. So the two yeah. cents. It was an investment in content. <laughs> we'll get to that more tomorrow. Let's see what Uncle Mike is investing in content right now because he's producing a whole heck of a lot of it when he's not talking to us. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what's lighting up your tape on a distinctly non-Uncle Mike type of day? I don't know if it's a distinctly non-Uncle Mike type of day. I mean, you got to buy dips, don't you? Ah, oh, you're selling a bunch of puts to the downside. Is that what you're doing? Just blasting away at garbage puts? <laughs> no, I'm actually not doing anything right now. <laughs> so. so you're a liar is what you're telling me. No, I think that with where we're going with it, I agree with Andrew. This is just a pullback day. I mean, we're down just under a half a percent in the S&P 500. So that's really not a lot of movement to speak of, so to speak. So I think that that's just kind of where it's at right now. A few buyers in the 10-year note. So we're getting a little bit of a rally there. And uh, I think for now, we're just kind of waiting and seeing what the next headline is going to get us. And uh, we're also waiting for earnings season. And I think uh, not to be a spoiler alert for around the block, I think we're kind of waiting on non-farm tomorrow, too. So I think this is just very much a and so we wait type of day in the marketplace today. Well, you don't have to wait any longer, listeners, for what's lighting it up out there, such as it is. Let's break it down for you, listeners. Let's start in Vixland. Vix kind of doing a whole heck of a lot of nothing which as we have discussed before on days when vix is kind of gently drifting down you don't usually see a ton of paper maybe that will change now that that maybe the vol is kicking into another gear here let's see it was at 170,000 and it's still pretty much right there about 175,000 right now so not blowing the doors off but also it's not nothing either uh, the adv has ticked up a little bit threatening that 600k level again up to 590 it was around 575 i believe on our last show. So it has ticked up a little bit. So VIX is putting up some paper this week. SPY at about 3 million. So that's pretty much close to almost exactly half of its ADV right now. You might be saying, wait a minute, the SPY ADV is much higher. No, that SPY ADV has fallen off a cliff. It's down pretty much a half a million contracts. It was around six and three quarters million. Now it's about six and a quarter million. So half a million contracts a day coming off the table in SPY right now. So things a little quiet out there 
in SPY, even though it's putting up some numbers today. So maybe they could change that. The S also putting up some numbers today. You know, when the S is at or around a million contracts by this time, that things are usually pretty active out there. It's at about 963 right now. The ADB, 1.63 million, by the way. I forgot which one of our pro listeners uh, was asking for an all kind of SPX questions answered show. I think we are going to do that coming up. So you may have gotten your wish. <laughs> How nice are we here to just cater to all of the wishes of our pro listeners. We love you all out there. Uh, IWM, 302,000 contracts right now. So kind of a light day in small caps. That ADB has actually ticked up a little bit as well. It's back up over 700K. It's about 715 right now. If you want more small caps, we'll get into those a little bit later. On the big dog flavor, the rut variety coming up in a little bit on Twyfel. Let's get out to the single names out there. And this is kind of what I expected out here right now. Not a ton of paper lighting up the tape right now. Only cost you 196,000 contracts to break into the top 10 today. I get you to Baba. Again, if it's under 200K, not a rock'em sock'em robot today, but it's also not, you know, 120 or 130, something like that, which would be a very quiet day. Uh, so closing out 200K, that gets us to Baba. China, perhaps back in the headlines a little bit again. But then again, it's a day that ends in Y. So Chinese names are usually in the headlines. Baba off 5.3% or a little over six handles today, right around 110. So leading some of that charge to the downside today. Number nine, Bank of America. I haven't seen them in the top 10 in a while. For a long time, the, the old school symbol twins, the pre-meme symbol twins. So Boeing and Bank of America were always neck and neck in our top 10. These days, you kind of hard pressed to see either of them. Boeing, unless they crash a Skyliner doesn't really make it in there anymore. And uh, Bank of America, not usually either, but Bank of America off about 3% today, right around 41 and three quarters. Good for number nine, 210,000 contracts. Number eight, a perennial contender right now. It's Facebook, 224,000. I'm sorry, Meta Platforms Inc. That will never, <laughs> that'll never pass my lips here. Meta Platforms, 224 and a half off about three and a third, about one and a half percent today. So Given back a little bit today, Neo number seven. You know, it's a day that ends in Y. You got to have some Neo out there. Neo, good for 235,000 contracts, trading right around 20 and three quarters right now, off six and a quarter percent as well. So, a rough day out there for Neo. Number six, this is the name that's been popping up a little bit of late. You know, after kind of uh, being an also ran for a while there after the dot com madness, Micron back on a lot of people's radar right now even though it's taken a little bit off today, off about one and three quarters percent to right around 77, 80, off about buck and a quarter out there. It's good for number six, though, right about exactly a quarter of a million contracts. That also shows you kind of how light it is today, listeners, when usually it costs you that much just to break into the top 10 today, if not more. And today that gets you all the way up to number six. Number five is our old friend, frequent offender, NVIDIA. Now we're jumping up a bit. Now we're doing some paper, jumping up over 300,000 contracts. Number five. NVIDIA, 570,000 contracts. Now we're getting there. Now we're getting a little bit more respectable. NVIDIA off a whopping one-third of 1% today. <laughs> After whipping around quite a bit, 274 and change this morning, got up as high as 282. Wow. So almost exactly an eight-point range on the day. So that would translate into nearly 600,000 contracts, even though right now is kind of settling out around unch, but it's had quite the aggressive day out there. Number four. The, I guess, returning king of the memes, you know, they seem like they even got supplanted a little bit by uh, other meme names for a while. But AMC, back on everyone's radar, we were kind of joking about this on our pro Q&A this week, this whole, it would seem on the surface to be ridiculous pairing of a gold miner and a theater chain, but <laughs> that's the world we're living in, listeners. Uh, AMC coming off a little bit today, off about exactly 3% or about three quarters of a buck, right around 25 bucks, let's see, on the day, it's got as low as... 2338 and as high as 2505. So it's had a little bit of a range out there today as well. Are you guys down with this whole investing in a gold miner for ANC? <laughs> it just makes me laugh thinking about it, but that's where we are. 610,000 contracts. So you know who's not laughing at AMC right now? It's all the exchanges and brokers out there. They're loving it. They're like, keep up this madness, AMC. We love you. Number three. Yes, I said number three, Tesla. So Tesla getting kicked to the curb a little bit again today. Tesla good for 621,000 contracts. It's off, let's see, about half a percent or five bucks. That's that's a, literally a rounding error in Tesla listeners. This thing could move 100 bucks at a clip, no problem. It's had a low today of, uh, let's see, pretty much right close to right now, 1086. And it's got as high as 1100 bucks. So not exactly a 
active day at all for Tesla, given what we've seen out there. But it's good enough for number three, even though it's kind of quiet, 621,000, probably why Tesla's coming down to peg. Number two, yes, I said number two, it's the fruit company. It's Apple. Only 861,000 contracts on the tape for Apple. It's at 176 and a little bit shy of a half, but 176.40 or so right now, off about three quarters of a percent. Started off the day 177.86, sold off hard to 175.69, and since then it's been kind of bouncing around, trying to regain that level, can't really do it. Uh, so a little bit of a sell-off out there today in Cupertino. And then number one, listeners, I've joked many times this name is, it should almost just change the number four slot to this name because it is always there. It is AMD. But not today, listeners. Advanced micro devices, almost a million contracts, 918 thousand contracts on the tape for amd man they're taking it on the chin off eight percent or 965 trading right around right around 109 and a half right now started the day 116.09 and it's been kind of slowly actually not that slowly moving down ever since looks like barclays downgraded them and cut their price target you know how i feel about analyst downgrades but still that's taking the stock on quite the journey today good for 918 thousand contracts here in amd wow so amd topped out looks like in november at 161.91 sold off down to 102 and change in january rallied back up to 132 in february 9th then it sold off again to march 14th back to 102 recently rallying up to 123 and a quarter only to have this downgrade clip their wings again back to 109 and change right now so it's been quite the topsy-turvy period for AMD, we're pretty much back at levels we haven't seen in AMD outside of the March and February lows, not since really uh, later in 2021, about August of 2021 out there. So intriguing stuff. AMD lighting it up out there today. Let's see what's lighting it up from an earnings perspective. Like we said, we don't have a ton of names on the docket. We kind of are mid-cycle, if you will. And there are still some names popping off, obviously. And we do crunch the numbers for you because we like you. But kind of the official season at least the way uh, Matt and his, his analysts codify it over there, is six weeks. And that's how they break it down. So that's where the season report comes in, all that fun stuff. So we are waiting for new season reports for you. We do have some new move and move results reports, including one of my favorite tickers, the Walgreens Boots Alliance, hot off the presses right before showtime from our friends over there at Orat's Walgreens Boots Alliance popping off today before the bell. They were at 47 and about a half bucks. They were pricing in about 4.6%, and they delivered 6% to the dark side. Let's see where they're hanging out right now. So a little bit of earnings outperformance there. Now they're still at about 40, 47. So they're still right about that range, about 5.5% to the dark side. So they still have outperformed their straddle today, if ever so, ever so slightly. So there you go. Walgreens Boots Alliance popping off. We also had some hot names like iPath, UiPath Inc., <laughs> ticker symbol path uh before or after the bell last night here man they were pricing in they were at 29 bucks they were pricing in 11 percent. they delivered 25 percent to the dark side wow they're off 27 percent right now this is the 21 dollar stock this is a software company out of bucharest romania if you're not familiar with it listeners in terms of upcoming earnings we do have a fair number still on the docket here you can go to the optionsinsider.com to see the names that we have in store for you right now, including Levi Astraus. They are next week on the 6th after the bell. They were trading right around 2060 as of this report. They were pricing in a buck and a quarter. In the past, they've moved 106. So a little bit extra jeans of all, <laughs> even though it's like Levi Strauss taking it on the chin today. They, this report was from this morning at 2060. They're already at 1993. So they have sold off a little bit already out here. So if those names intrigue you, listeners, We've got the reports for you over there. Constellation Brands, two really quick. Let's go out to them as well. Ticker symbol STZ. They were uh, they're on the seventh before the bell next week. They're at two thirty three, pretty much even as of the time of this report. They've sold off a little bit in the market today as well, about half a buck. Uh, they're pricing in eight thirty nine. The past they moved eight twenty eight. So a wee bit of extra juice, a daub of extra juice, if you will, out here in uh, in Constellation Brands. And let's see, just a few others here. Do we can find any frequent offenders for the odd block here? Israeli software names, you name it, all kinds of fun stuff. Right now, we're hanging out for the last three years, pretty much, average together. We're hanging out at an average of 
which is actually higher than it has been of late. Again, that's kind of reflects the last couple of cycles doing a little bit more outperformance from a ball perspective than we have seen for pretty much the rest of the pandemic. As it stands right now, week one averages at 88%, week two, an apocalyptic 44%. So do not buy vol in week two of earnings season, listeners. Week three, 61%. Week four, 66%. Week five, 69%. Week six, also pretty rough, 53%. And uh, thanks to the magic of week one, that still averages out to about 83%. Of course, a lot of those is because of different numbers of names are reporting in different weeks, listeners. So. Uh, interesting stuff here across the board. You can check that out for yourselves. Looking at some earnings trades as well. They are still monitoring 73 long straddles for your trading pleasure, 60 short straddles, and 102 long calendars on that earnings trade report. So you can see how they're all fair. And unfortunately, no short calendars this cycle, which is probably a relief for a lot of you because that trade tends to blow people's minds. <laughs> Selling the longer term contract, buying the nearer terms, kind of crazy. Uh, but we can get there. Speaking of crazy, let's get to it, listeners. It is time to unleash the beast. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by the optionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. everybody let's do it let's get weird let's get wild let's get whimsical it is time for the odd block let's see where our eye of sauron fixes its fiery gaze today first off this is a newcomer to the odd block we kind of just really started talking about it recently on options oddities as well this is a new name that i have heard of you know the rock lobster had heard of but neither of us really realized it was public until we started. We saw it come across our screens on oddities. It was kind of an interesting awakening for us. It was Turtle Beach. You know, they make all those kind of high-priced gaming peripherals, usually on the audio side, so headsets and all that kind of stuff. Ticker symbol, appropriately enough, for a headphone manufacturer here, H-E-A-R. Trading right now, 21 and a half bucks. We had some interesting trades we profiled on them in oddities. Let's look at the year that was out here, and then we'll get to what's lighting it up today. Kind of a weird one today, which is appropriate for the odd block. We got to let's see a year ago it was trading twenty six sixty seven, so a wee bit higher than it is right now, right around five bucks. And then it rallied to its high for the year, not quite June eighth, listeners, but June eighth adjacent, June fourteenth, thirty eight dollars and seventy cents. And ever since then, it's been kind of a long, sordid tail to the dark side. It hit its low on actually March fifteenth, not fourteenth. Of 18, actually, sorry, 1703. It got even a buck lower. 1703. And since then, it's had a nice little pop. It got up to about 22 and a half bucks. That was earlier this week. And then the rest of this week has been selling off again back to where it is right now. 21 and a half dollars. So actually up a little bit today. Uh, so that's kind of been the saga of Turtle Beach. And Mr. Rock Lobster, we got what looks like a weird one. First, what came on our radar was it looked like a bit of a. Opening ratio vertical. We had the May 2330 vertical going up 2,500 times. Looks like paper buying the 23s for $2.04. That's an 80 ball listeners. And then crushing through the bid. The bid was 35 cents. They sold them for 30 cents, 4,000. So not quite one by two, but on a ratio there of the 30 calls. Again, for 30 cents, that's a 68 vol. And then it, it just seemed weird. So we thought, you know, I'd send it back to look, see if there was any, was any other paper associated with that. And what it did find, actually, was at the same time, and none of this mark spread, but it all went up at the same time. So it looks like a duck. It quacks like a duck. Uh, this we also saw, looks like paper selling 1,500 of the April 20 calls. And for, let's see, those were $2.16. And selling 1,000 of the June 20 calls for $3.00. And 66 cents, a little bit off the bid there. So hard, a little harder to tell there. Now, the vertical was opening on both legs. The other two, not so much. So it could be a closing of the 20s. And like I said, we just did recently break back through 
the 20 handle out there in Turtle Beach just a couple of weeks ago. So it could be getting through the 20s, dumping the 20. It is weird that they're dumping the Junes as well. So there looks like they could be dumping 1,500 of the April 20s, 1,000 of the June 20s, and then buying a one by 2 of the 2330 vertical, not quite one by 2 in May. So kind of splitting the uprights there between April and June. So kind of weird across the board, Mr. Rock Lobster. Is that, is that your take as well? What's your spidey sense telling you about this weird four-way in Turtle Beach, sir? Uh, a four-way? That's a, that's a, that'll keep you busy. Um, so I think the April is probably closing. I, I check that out because there's, there's a low eye on the April. Um, and I was trying to get the value there. So yeah, it looks like they bought, probably bought the April's in early March and they're pretty much getting out of them for what they paid for them. So that'd be like the April side. And then then you go to the June, and the June is looking like some kind of funky, low-cost call spread. So they're buying the 23s and selling 30s. I saw that as an upside uh, trade. So, you know, they're doing a little ratio there. What I don't get is the June part. So that's... I just say it's it's sound it's a little let's just call it let's say okay so you got the May twenty three thirty you know funky spread on top of the June twenties what is that like a funky buy right or like yeah, you buy it's, the it's June twenty all sorts of weird here I'm just trying to look up the yeah, June so, yeah like I can't even tell if they want to be long or short or even like credit neutral like vol neutral or just because they're long a thousand of the twenties, so my guess is, you know, on the thirties, they they did extra thirties maybe to cover some margin, maybe because they're doing one thousand over twenty five hundred, which would give you the the twenties, you know, for about you know a little bit of a credit, right? And then they just piled on the thirty calls for a margin control, but the thirty calls kind of went through the bid. So again, <laughs> all kinds of all kinds of weird oddball city. You know, look, I'm looking here. You're right. The Junes went up on March 14th as part of a spread. Looks like this guy's been kind of buying upside in Turtle Beach for a while, and then maybe rolling it down when the opportunity took because he he took off on the 14th, 1500 of the March 24 calls for a dime. So I'm guessing those are probably a loser, Mister Rock Lobster. And then he yes, bought yes. A, he bought a thousand, so he also bought less. That's also a sign he's not sitting on house money. He bought a thousand of the June twenties for two fifty five. So he made money on those. He dumped those for three sixty six. So I'm still guessing this guy is probably down some money because he's been looks like he's been buying calls into the sell off for a while. Yeah, and so I think maybe then, so maybe the June's close, April's close. I, yeah, you did a good job of sleuthing there, and then he's going to try the twenty three thirty spread for some kind, you know, trying to get some low cost there to make his money back. I guess it's kind of a quasi stock repair at that point. He doesn't mind letting some go at, yes. the, at the 30 handle, I guess. Yeah, this is the weird one, which is, hey, that's what the segment's for, right, listeners? The oddities. They don't call it the not <laughs> or, odd block. Uh, the not odd block. Oddities, different show. Yes, uh, Oddities, yes. Odd block indeed. A lot of oddness. What do you think about this one? So we talked about Turtle Beach before, not on this show, really only for our pro members, but you have thoughts on Turtle Beach? You like it at these levels? You like you like what this guy's been doing, throwing good money after bad for calls for a while? <laughs> Hit us up. Let us know as we get into some, some – let's do some payback now. Let's get some of the odd block payback. Let's see if some of these trades we profiled have paid off or not. Let's see. Let's start in Uncle Mike's favorite name. This is Technip FMC PLC. This is the old French-American UK domicile global oil and gas company. <laughs> Technip FMC PLC. Gotta love that. I won't tell you where it's trading right now. A bit of a spoiler. But back on March 7th, we profile. Looks like somebody had a little bit of an, of an axe to grind. This one said, you know what? This thing is not going to be moving too much farther for the rest of this month. So I'm going to take advantage of some pretty decent juice, 95 vol level, and I'm going to come in and not quite crush that bid, but get pretty close to it, sell almost 10,000, 9,054 
47 for 47 cents uh, out there. Again, that's a 95 vol listeners. The stock was a little bit over eight bucks at the time, 804. There were no earnings in sight. It was what it looked like, just a straight up chance to harvest a little bit of the old risk premium. At the time, we said we didn't really hate the vol levels on this trade. You can't argue against almost triple digit vol for only a few weeks. And it looks like, Mr. Uncle Mike, that this one actually kind of paid off. They uh, The stock closed at $7.30 on expiration, and these bad boys were still open. So they pocketed a whopping $425,000, even higher than the Rock Lobster's metric of the girlfriend's Ferrari. Mr. Uncle Mike, what say you, sir? Are you a fan of these? Uh, I know you like yourself a call writer, too. Are you a fan of these aggressive call rights in TechNip FMC PLC? Not against an aggressive call, right? But I can't really say... Speak uh, clearly on TechNIF FNC PNC, though. You assume I can, sir? You think I'm well-versed in TechNIF FNC PNC? <laughs> That's why I toss to you, sir, for all the fun. Mr. Rock Lobster, do you concur that this was... We kind of liked it at the time, I recall. You can't hate these vol levels, and it seems like uh, he got what he wanted, which was 425 grand, sir. No, I thought that... I mean, this wasn't bad, right? Like, oil services, the return was pretty good. You know, like five percent return or whatever. Like, how how are you gonna get? How are you gonna get upset about that? You know, I, I would say that you know. Hey, listen, a trade that makes you four hundred twenty five thousand bucks, you can complain about a lot worse things. <laughs> yes, you know, <laughs> like definitely. You go to Portillos and they and they don't give you you know you, they forgot your peppers or something like that. That's something you can complain about. Four hundred twenty five thousand bucks. I don't know. I don't think you. I don't think you can complain about that. I probably would complain about that if I got no peppers. You're right. That would be uh, that would be a hundred percent. You'd be very upset. That's a core component of the Chicago dog. Got to have that pepper on it. And, yeah. and a pickle. Yeah, it's kind of like a salad it. on a bun. It's kind of crazy, but it's fun. <laughs> and you know what's funny about those peppers? You can't put them on anything else. <laughs> they are kind <laughs> of. Else you them? They are kind of suited just to that. You're right. <laughs> they are yes. single use peppers. Our, our chat reminding us they also liked the Turtle Beach. It was the 17 half puts we were talking about in Turtle Beach. You recall those, Mr. Rock Lobster? There was a ton of put action out there. And I think, as I recall, I think someone was actually buying those bad boys because they thought this thing was going to just explode to nothing. And we were like, why is this person doing this? <laughs> uh, yes. So, yeah, they were kind of interesting. Now we have the other side of that paper, which is the uh, loading up on the upside. Let's go on out now to one more name here. Let's see if we can catch Uncle Mike napping again. Let's go out first to everyone's favorite name, the Owl. AKA Blue Owl Capital Inc. Ticker symbol Owl. This goes back to our February 17th show. You remember those days, listeners? February 17th, pre Ukrainian invasion. We were all just young and whimsical. <laughs> now we're jaded and angry and old. But <laughs> at the time, we talked about Blue Owl. It was right after earnings on this name. It was the same day. So this is the post earnings trade. Someone coming in and dumping. Oh, before I do that, really quickly, really quick rundown on Blue Owl. Uh, let's see. Today, I won't tell you where they're trading. Today, nine dollars and eighty-eight cents a year ago, and then they topped out at seventeen eighty-nine on November second, before pretty much selling off for the rest of the year. When we profile this on February seventeenth, the stock was at twelve and a half bucks. Someone came in and just said, "You know what? I'm going to play right there. The twelve half strike sounds good to me. I'm going to buy five thousand and one of the twelve half calls in March for seventy cents." Kind of the flip of the other trade we just talked about. They paid a 65 vol for these. And as we are wont to do, I think we were a little skeptical of straight up at the money call buys, especially for a decent amount of vol. But it was post earnings. Also, if you buy in premium immediately post earnings, you got to be careful because you could easily catch that falling knife. If you don't get the right moment where the vol is still imploding, 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 you got to wait till it really has squeezed out all the excess juice. If you buy it before then, kind of going to be left holding the bag. And looks like this one kind of worked out for them. Not quite, but it, they got some of the move they wanted. The stock closed at $12.83 on expiration listeners. So unfortunately, <laughs> they ended up losing $0.37 cents on this deal. So not quite the, uh, the mad bonanza of call profits. So that's about a buck eighty-five or so listeners. So not they lost almost a girlfriend's Ferrari or significant other's Ferrari out there. Mr. Uncle Mike, I'm assuming you like these post-earnings calls in Owl a little bit less than our previous trade, sir? I like everything. <laughs> no, I think that um, if uh, they're bullish, why not buy some calls? But um, I'm typically more of a spread kind of guy in situations like that, though. 
Even in Blue Owl, if I owned it. Even in the Owl? Wow. That's saying a lot, sir. (laughs) Yeah, this is definitely a situation where a spread would have come in handy. It would have pretty much maybe made this close to a break-even trade at that point. Uh, This one, this was just a bit of a bridge too far. If you are going to do this kind of aggressive trade listers, maybe you do have a spread leg against it, as we've always advocated. But, hey, it didn't work out. He didn't lose all his money, but he lost a, a fair amount of it, listeners, as we keep on rolling. It is time to see now... What you folks have on your brain, are you winning? Are you losing? Are you making money? Hopefully you are. Let's find out. It's time for the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody, let's dance. Let's talk about our question of the week first. Let's see how that is unfolding. We're asking you right now, the recent drama in VXX, if you listen to Vol Views or this show, you know what the heck we're talking about. It has focused the spotlight back on volatility product meltdown. So I thought we'd ask you folks, which Vol product implosion or failure or drama has had the greatest impact on the overall Vol market? We gave you four choices. The great SVXY neutering, uh, the 2018 death of XIV, the TVIX disaster of 2012, or what is currently ongoing right now with VXX, call it what you will. Let's go back to the Rock Lobster, sir. Mr. Rock Lobster, what is your choice? What do you think our audience is voting for here of the great Vol Meltdown, sir? I think the XIV was the, was the worst, personally, because um, just the whole product just went away. Like, okay, how many <laughs> product? doesn't exist anymore so i and i think that's what the listeners want with death of xiv interesting mr uncle mike do you concur sir or do you have a crazy out of left field suggestion no i'm definitely on the xiv camp i just remember going through that and like i was saying on monday's show the fact that i'm getting calls from clients from their other trading account at times or their friends trading account and things like that uh, to me that was the one that most impacted me and uh, from what i can tell i would go with that and i would believe the audience would as well Yeah, the audience are no fools. They are going with that one as well. well. Just ticking as we're talking up to almost 70% right now choosing the death of XIV. So it's a pretty firm majority for that one, followed by a distant number two, the ongoing VXX drama, 17 and about a half percent. And then the TVIX disaster closing in on 9% and the great SVXY neutering, even though he put the great in there, (laughs) only about 4%. For that one. So if you don't agree with those votes, you have a different opinion, you want to just reaffirm your opinion on this. You think XIV was a bad deal at options, the place to go on Twitter listeners. You got about a day. So the clock is ticking. If you listen on the podcast, you will have an opportunity to play along. If you're waiting for like Vol Views podcast tomorrow or something like that, probably will be done by then. So don't wait too long, listeners. All right. Let's see. Let's go out here to oh, Uncle Mike. There's a a fun and or challenging question for you because you have to kind of pick amongst your children. This comes from EZ, or maybe EZT. Let's go with EZT. It sounds fun. He says, what is Uncle Mike's favorite strategy block of all times? Mr. Uncle Mike, you've done a few of them. I haven't counted up how many, but quite a few. (laughs) Can you possibly choose a favorite? Or maybe, sir, maybe I'll make your life a little easier. This is outside the scope of Mr. EZ's question. But maybe if you have to do like a top five, I'll allow it, sir. I would say my favorite one, first off, I just thought of something. You down with EZT? Yeah, you know me. Um, but uh, I would say my favorite one, I think Andrew was even on the show the day I did it, is when I, I forget when I did it, but it was probably about seven or eight years ago. I did the 12 days of Christmas through, I sang it, and it was um, based on option trading rules, I think. That was probably my favorite one. And what's funny, is that that just came to me like five minutes before the strategy block. I had no plans of doing it. I just had an idea like five minutes beforehand, wrote it out real quick, and then it all happened. So that was probably my favorite one because it felt like I was inspired on that one. The singing Uncle Mike. I'm going to have to go back and uh, recut and remaster that one so all of our listeners, the new listeners, can enjoy it as well. (laughs) I don't know. You got more singing in you in the future, Uncle Mike, or is that like a one and done? One and done. So there you go, Mr. EZT. I thought he was going to maybe answer one of his rants or something. He has been some epic rants over the years. But no, he threw a bit of a curveball at us with uh, the singing 12 Days of Christmas episode. I'll have to go dig that one up and have to repurpose it for you folks out there. But maybe maybe you get him to sing for you 
on his YouTube channel, listeners. So uh, we shall see. Uh, here's kind of a generic question. <laughs> we get a lot like this all the time. This one happens to come from Max. He wants to know, where do you see the best opportunities for covered calls right now? So, again, kind of a broad question. that It covers the entire purview and scope of the marketplace, it could be commodities. It could be maybe we'll maybe we'll go down that road. Maybe we'll talk about like sectors, something like that that may be more intriguing. Could be vol products, could be indexes. So maybe we'll start with you, Mister Rock Lobster. If there's, if there's anything that's really leaping off the page at you right now, like hey, this is an interesting sector that is intriguing me for its comparative levels of juice for covered calls for Mister Max. Have at it, sir. Uh, I think the uh, um, oil oil stocks. Get the divvies, and you get pretty relatively nice premiums right now uh, for those. So I would say, yeah, oil stocks, uh, exploration companies, stuff like that. Um, so I just sell puts in them until they give me the stock, but um, which is essentially the same thing. But I think, yeah, there's definitely. Uh, I mean, it, you have to think about it. As, <laughs> You know, nobody nobody wants to buy oil from the Russians anymore. They want to buy it from some other people. So I think that's there's a little there's a little bit of built in implied uh, demand on that side for a little while. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, do you have any thoughts? Do you concur with that? Do you have a different area that is attracting your attention right now from a, a covered call perspective, sir? Maybe you could sing it for us. <laughs> Don't have the ability to sing it, but no, I like the. I've lit. I literally um, was monitoring my covered call position for one of my clients on XLE before the show. I mean, I like it on there. Uh, one of the stocks that we're holding in our triple income fund is Chevron. Uh, so I agree with uh, the Rock Lobster on this just because it's, even if they go down, they're still high quality stocks. You're getting a dividend on them and premium's kind of nice. There you go. Two votes there for the oil and oil services stocks. Listen, by the way, I did pull up really quickly what we were talking about on oddities, give you a little bit of a premium show preview here listeners for the turtle beach it was back on december 17th on our show there we talked about people throwing good money after bad in turtle beach puts as was as i recall i remember them buying some downside puts they had already bought the d's 22 puts and those had gone the way of the dodo and then they came back in at 7500 times they bought 7700 more of the jan 17 half puts they paid 35 cents for those I just broke down the tail of the tape for you the last couple of months. Listeners, you probably can tell they did not work out very well. So they had lost about a quarter of a million dollars in the first trade, and they wasted another quarter of a million on the second trade. So sounds like this person may be diametrically opposed to what the other person was doing, which is buying all the calls. I don't think these were related trades. It wasn't like they were buying a strangle. It just seemed like someone was really panicking about a lot of downside in Turtle Beach, and they spent about half a million bucks to express that view. And including very, very near term 17 half puts that was already kind of at the low for the year for the stock. And they were just scrambling a 97 vol. It seemed like wasted money to us at the time. And it turned out to be the case. But, you know, what's never wasted time. Listeners, it's the around the block. So here we go. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for around the block. We got some of our listeners in our chat saying they they liked that trade as well because they sold those puts, the Jan 17 half puts. I remember some of our listeners liking us profiling that. We like to give you some guys interesting targets, and that one certainly seemed like a decent one. So congrats to all of you in our secret club who did sell those Jan 17 half puts. It worked out pretty well for you folks. Not so much for this guy, but glad our listeners did well here. But, you know, Uncle Mike, he's been kind of champing at the bit. He was teasing his around the block at the start of the show. So I don't know. I guess he was just eager for the show to be done the entire time. So let's let's let him have it now. The floor is yours, Mr. Uncle Mike. What is your around the block? Uh, let me think. Uh, oh, yeah. Non-farm payrolls. I think that uh, that could be a market mover tomorrow. Uh, definitely looking at that. 4,600 on the S&P. We broke through it to the upside. But uh, now we're on, having a hard time breaking through it again. So watching 4,600 non-farm and seeing as well as how the 10 year is going to react to the announcement tomorrow that I'll be waiting with, with bated breath uh, at 7.30 tomorrow morning, Chicago time, when it comes out. Are you back on said boat with the 10-year note, sir? I never got off the boat from the 10-year <laughs> note. Even if I'm not on the boat, I'm on the boat. You live on that boat. You have a, a timeshare that never expires. 
on the boat with the 10 year. No, speaking of 10 year fun, I do believe we're going to have, he loves all things macro. I do believe we're going to have a return of the Viceroy sometime soon in the pro Q and A's. We kind of invoked him when, uh, when we set up the Viceroy signal, when we started talking about cheap stocks and he answered. So he, he will be back to answer your question soon for all of you cool cats in the pro Q and A hot seat. That's always a fun one. Maybe Mr. Uncle Mac want to get in there, ask some questions. He loves himself, the Viceroy. All right, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, what is on your radar for the rest of this week through the weekend, sir? I've got a – well, we're trying to see what this end of the quarter, this non-farm payroll, I think this could be our what, – what's keeping the vol bid, uh, what's making the market a little uneasy, you know, uh, like if it's a smashing number, you know, they're going to be raising rates and all that kind of stuff, so – We'll see. So I think there's, I think there's really a little bit of trepidation around that. Yeah, and I'm looking at oil stocks. Uh, Joe's releasing 180 million barrels over the next six months. So that's a million barrel. That's a million barrels per day, which is probably what 20 cents a gallon. Uh, is that going to do much? I don't think so. Um, and since every oil stock in the world is up today, so again, I still like that that long oil trade. I haven't. Uh, sold any of my oil stocks yet so what the heck so i again that's another one where again if you want to do some income premium harvesting or something like that might not be a bad place uh to go check that out check that out if you want more oil talk listeners just stay tuned if you're in the secret club you get some fun stuff in the live chat we'll be back in exactly half an hour with the one and only dan gramza to break down all that action what's cooking in the land of OPEC and all this fun. What's going on from a crude oil options perspective? I got a feeling we'll be talking about that and a whole bunch more. But before we go, let's go back around the horn. Let's start with the uncle of Mike's. I think he's done with his lunch now. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, if you could grace us with your presence one final time. What? If folks want to reach out to you, they maybe they want you to sing them a little something. Where should they go? What should they do? couple places you can follow me on twitter at mike tusaw if you're looking for a financial advisor who delves in the option product if it's appropriate for the client of course uh, feel free to check out my website stcharleswealth.com or you can check out my youtube videos putting out one a week this year that's the goal uh just type in st charles wealth management and you'll see some of those videos how about we have a new deal anyone agrees to become a new uncle mike customer or client you create a, a compose a custom song for them what do you think huh I've never been much of a singer, and I think this is the only recorded venue I've ever sang on when I did it seven or eight years ago or whatever that was. That's what makes it so special, so unique, only for Uncle Mike clients at SingCharlesWealth.com. He won't say it. I will say it for him. I personally guarantee he will compose a custom song for you if you become an Uncle Mike client today. (laughs) SingCharlesWealth.com. See, your compliance can't get mad about that. It's just a song. You're not giving away any secrets. <laughs> All right, Mr. Rock Lobster. I don't know. Maybe if they call Ted, will you sing a song for them as well, sir? You got to sing the song. Of, uh, yes, Andrew is the most handsome man on options, and you get 10% off optionsbit.com if you call Ted 888-TRADE-01. There you go. 888-TRADE-01. He did misspeak a little bit, though. It's not Andrew. It is myself, me, myself, and I, who is the sexiest man. I mean, it's an official title. I can't really argue with. I also, I forgot, I am still the Lord of Options. Well, I do have that official certificate hanging on my wall in the studio here. I am an official Lord. So I have multiple titles to enjoy here in the options market. In the meantime, you can call Ted over there in the land of the pit, optionpit.com, to learn more. We got to get on out of here, but don't worry. Our day is just getting started, listeners. We'll be back with Twifo in a little bit and all sorts of fun. Then, of course, back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for volatility views. And then after that, for all you cool kids, you like hearing about those Turtle Beach puts and everything else we're profiling in the oddities, you know where you got to go, theoptionsdecided.com slash secret club to join up, and you can join all the fun. And you can also get in there for the March giveaway because it's popping off really soon. So you want to you be part of that. Trust me. This is unique, bespoke, one-of-a-kind stuff. (laughs) Nobody else is really doing anything like this, which makes it kind of fun. We like you folks out there. And we'll see you back here again on Monday, another episode of The Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody.
You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>